What's up? Well, that's good, fam. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Y'all, I'm so excited for today, and I know y'all are too, because anytime we say, who do y'all want to have on the podcast, I know for sure we're going to get a whole lot of Lauren Daigle requests. So Lauren, I am so glad that you are back on the Well, That's Good podcast. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you, Sadie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And this is like such an exciting time because you just had an album come out and you have another one that's about to come out, which is super, super exciting. And I cannot wait to listen. And I have to say, like prepping for the podcast for people, it's always fun. But today was extra fun because I got to listen to your whole album. And I was like, this is so good. Every song Yay. is so good. So you congrats. You got all those 23? You got every one of them? No, I just have the the album that's out the right now. 10. Yes. Okay. I love it. Okay. I'm going to send you the rest. I'll send you the rest as well. This I'm so glad best. you like it. This is the best. And I know. We're having like, um, I don't know if you... We should name this, but it's like uh, Excitement Twins because LO Conference is at the same time that the album is releasing. Oh, that's so, so we're awesome. Like, excitement it's Twins. Like, two, one, like we're having excitement babies at the same time. <laughs> that's awesome. I love it. I remember actually when we were planning LO Conference and we picked the date and then Steph, who, you know, for those listening, if you don't know who Steph is, she's been on the podcast before. She is my right hand girl at LO and she's one of Lauren's best friends. And she was like, wait, I think that is the time that Lauren's album comes out. I was like, no way. So that is so fun. It's perfect timing. It, it is. is so fun. The next day is my birthday too. Oh my so gosh. We've got triplets. September 8th. Triplets. Yeah, <laughs> triplets. I like that even better. So September 8th, the record comes out. September 9th is my birthday. And then LO conference is that whole time. That's right? awesome. You're right. September 8th and 9th. Okay. That is yes. so fun. Oh my gosh. I love That's it so funny. much. Well, okay. I can't wait to talk about all the things in this album because I've only listened to the first part, but it is kind of like a Netflix series, you know, when you watch it and you're like, okay, now like I need season two because yes. that went by way too fast. So um, first of all, you did just do two albums. Like that's a lot. What made you decide to go for two? Was it always the plan or did it just kind of happen? No, it definitely, it was really unique. Okay. You know, that Bible verse that talks about um, the word of God is alive and active, sharper yeah. than any two. I just start sharp enough to separate between bone and marrow, soul and spirit. Mm -hmm. Well, I kept getting this idea of writing songs for the soul from the soul hmm. and then writing songs for the spirit from the spirit. Wow. And I, I remember in the process, I like sat down with my label and I said, Hey, I would love to make this record. Um, I, I really can see this as like two visual elements, like the soul and the spirit hmm. and have like a variety of songs on, on this project. And at first it was like, okay, how are we going to do this? How are we going to put this together? Well, fast forward, we wrote over like 50 songs or something. Wow. And I remember like breaking them all down and being like, okay, we can only have so many on a record. And I got down to like 20. And hmm. I remember thinking, this is as this is as low as I can go. Like, I love these songs so much. Um, but right before that, when we were in the writing process and like trying to figure out which songs are going to go on the record, um, I remember we got to 14 and my manager looked at me and she said, okay, you always talk about the soul and the spirit. Like if those are two categories on the, the record, like which songs would go to the soul, which songs would go to spirit. And so I broke them up and it was seven and seven even. And no I was way. like, that's crazy. I wasn't planning that, you know? Wow. And so I just told myself, I'm going to keep writing. And it naturally panned out to like 10 and 10. And so uh, fast forward, we're in the studio. And now at this point, I was seeing this all as one body of work, like that the first record and the second record are actually just one. And we have like one release in that whole thing. Um, and I was with one of the heads of the label. Her name's Julie Greenwald. And she said to me, she said, look, you're an albums kind of girl. You love a lot of music. You love like uh, a lot of energy. And I, I like, I'm on a drive, right? And I put a record on and I listen from the top to the bottom. Or if I like am playing a record when I'm you know, flying in a plane or just sitting at home. I like to listen from the top all the way down. And so she said, it's a long listening experience. Like if you go and listen to a record 
that has over 20 songs, like somebody's going to be sitting there for two hours. <laughs> yeah. And back half of your record might never be heard. And so that's when she said, would you be interested in splitting it up into two? And I, I was like, you know what? Yeah, let's just go for it. We'll try it. And like I had fans that had been waiting for music. It's been like five years since I put music out. So I knew wow. they had been waiting for a long time. So I was like, oh, this is a way to give them two things uh, at two different – or one thing at two different times. Like yeah. that could be really fun. So that's that's why we did That's it. so cool. I love that so much. So with the whole soul and spirit being two separate things, to you, like what is the difference of those two things, if you will? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like the soul is the part that kind of talks about the human condition. Like it it kind of talks about experiences that we go through, moments in life that are like, whoa, that was interesting. I didn't expect this or oh, I feel heavy because this person passed, you know, yeah. the, kind of the more human side. That's where I see the soul. And the, the spirit is all things from God, right? the Holy Spirit coming in and interacting with our story. And when I say like write from the Spirit for the Spirit, it's not that Jesus doesn't write through me through those other songs, yeah. into those other songs either. Um, but these are songs that like remind you of his goodness, remind you yeah. of who he is and uh, remind you kind of like in your journey through life, how he is that constant. So yeah. those were kind of the elements and themes that we brought into the record. That's cool. Um, but I also like this record was one of those things where I remember COVID hit. I was super overwhelmed because I was on tour mm -hmm. and I remember getting off a tour and I said, okay, I'm going to go see one of my friends um, down in Savannah. It was like St. Patrick's day. There was a lot of like parades and different things. They said, Oh, it's so much fun. You should come down. So I went to Savannah. I didn't realize like the whole, everything was about to shut down. This is like mm -hmm. right before the shutdown. They just said, hey, we have to cancel your show. So I'm thinking like, oh, we'll be back in a couple of weekends. Right, It'll be right. easy. And I go down to Savannah and I get a phone call and it was like, hey, Lauren, we're really having to shut like everything down. And I was wow. like, wait, what? And it's that thing of like, I was going 900 miles an hour flying through life. Like my career was rocket launching. And when I mean rocket launching, I was like literally – it wasn't just a rocket. It was a missile. Like mm -hmm. it was headed too fast in the wrong direction. It was, it was beautiful. I'm not taking away from that, but when things move at such a speed, sometimes you don't have time to say, okay, God, what do you see in this? Yeah. What do you feel about this? How? And so your life starts to get rocky mm -hmm. and uncertain in a way. And I remember just being in this moment of like, I was going so fast and I didn't just like come back to normal life. Mm -hmm. It was like even beyond normal life. It was like, yeah, yeah. okay, we stopped and then we hit a brick wall going a hundred miles an hour in a car. And um, I feel like God really used that time to like reposition my heart, reset my mind and my thinking. He always talks about renewing your mind. And I realized like through the process of making this record, how vital that mm -hmm. is. I know that, like anxiety attacks and panic attacks and fear uh, is like taking over mental health. We hear that talked about all the yeah. time, but there is something that comes with renewing your mind. And I was in a space where I really needed to like finesse that in my life. Mm -hmm. I needed to surrender so many things. And so yeah. um, I say all that to say that it was the process of making this record was very restorative and like That's redeeming. Awesome. I started the process of writing with so much fear, with so much intimidation, feeling wow. like I had just experienced wit lip lash because my whole career had just came to a screeching halt. Right. Wow. Um, and this record God used to rejuvenate me hmm. and to remind me of the pure things, like remind me of the good things, remind me of the things that actually matter, not just according to the industry, but according to the kingdom. Yeah. And that is very different. Good, you know, that's yeah. a different world. And so, um, yeah, for anybody listening, I just, my dream for this record is that it would bring like peace and solace and comfort and that they would have life stories on there that they're like, oh my gosh, I feel that I relate to that. Yes. You know? And then other moments where they're like, okay, wow, my, my heart needed a, this song and I didn't even realize it. Yeah. You know, 
Those ways that only God can meet you through a song. It's so good. Well, I love that. And I love how when you were talking about the soul and the spirit and how you were like, yes, and there's there's a both and to that, right? And I love Mm -hmm. how whenever you listen to the songs, it is so relatable and it's so fun. Then all of a sudden you're like, wow, like this is so Jesus. Like you're you're strengthened in your faith, but it's also so personal at the same time. And I think that I preached a message at Passion last year about how like our spiritual life and our personal life shouldn't be two different things. It should be Mm -hmm. one and the same. It's like, it shouldn't be like, oh yeah, this is what I do when I'm acting spiritual and I go to church and I talk about Jesus or I do my little Bible say 10 minutes. It's like, no, like Jesus is my, it's a relationship. So it's my whole life. So my personal life is my spiritual life. And I think that that really comes through in this whole album. Like it's so unique to any Christian music I've ever heard because it is like, it doesn't sound like Christian music, but it's so faith filled. And so I want to ask you because you know, our whole theme is live original. And when I think of someone living original, it is you for sure. Like you're so original, like you're, even your style is so original and so unique and it's so you. And then you hear that in your songs. How do you fight like, you know, wanting to just conform to the industry, conform to what everyone else is doing, looking at someone else and saying, well, that's working. I'm going to do that. And how do you actually like stay in your lane of like what God's doing in your life? With all the activity that the Huffman likes to do and even just the activity that we do anyways from chasing honey around and having a baby, it can be easy to get a little dehydrated and we love some electrolytes in our house. We like to replenish them. We like to feel strong in them. And that is why I love Element. It is an awesome electrolyte drink mix that has everything your body needs and nothing it doesn't. Here are the little Element packs I have right here. It has no sugar, artificial ingredients or coloring, no gluten or fillers. That's basically Basically, none of the junk, only the good stuff, friends. Electrolytes like sodium are responsible for so many important things in our body, like hormone regulation, fluid balance, and tons of other functions. So when we sweat, whether it's from fun, like a good workout, or something not fun, like being sick, we lose electrolytes, which can lead to fatigue, muscle cramps, and headaches. That is no fun, and I've experienced all of those things, but with Element, you can help avoid that. And I actually have experienced muscle fatigue and pregnancy really bad, um, so I had to drink an electrolyte drink every day. My doctor actually recommended that and that's how I found Element and love it so much. And it has also helped my body uh, produce more milk for Haven, which is awesome. So very thankful for this. It has been a win-win in pregnancy and being a mom. But Christian just drinks it because he has all these sports he plays and works out so much. And it's actually true that athletes lose up to seven grams of sodium a day. But Element is a total game changer. With a science-backed ratio of a thousand milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium, Element is formulated to fit anyone's electrolyte needs. Plus, it works with keto, low-carb, and paleo diets, which is awesome for everyone. So like I said, I've had a great personal experience with it through pregnancy and postpartum. Um, Also, I just really like the taste of it. It's like the best thing on a hot summer Louisiana day after going on a walk or doing a little workout, drinking my raspberry Element. That's my favorite one. I also love the watermelon. I have three different flavors here. There's eight different flavors total. It's just awesome. Element is being used by so many different people from moms to podcast hosts to professional athletes to Olympic athletes to people who just want to stay hydrated and healthy. So you're in good company with all the people. Right now, Element is offering a free sample pack with any purchase, which is what we did to find out the flavors we liked. So that's eight single serving packets free with any Element order. This is a great way to get to try all the flavors and figure out which ones you like. They even have a chocolate one for you chocolate lovers um and so definitely want to get this now get yours at drinkelement.com slash whoa this deal is only available through my link so make sure you check it out you got to go to drink element so d-r-i-n-k element is spelled l-m-n-t dot com slash whoa element offers no questions asked refunds so it's totally risk-free if you don't like it share it with a salty friend and they'll give you your money back no questions asked so you have nothing to lose here go get your element today That's the hardest. Okay. I once, I did not make this up. I wish I was this brilliant. But (laughs) someone once told me, they said, um, comparison is the greatest thief of creativity. Hmm. It's like the biggest enemy to creativity. 
when you compare yourself to other people, you're not thinking with original thought. You're not coming up with something that's personal and intimate for you. Mm -hmm. You're saying, oh, I want to be as good as or as cool as or as validated yeah, as. Yeah, that's true. X, Y, and Z. And so I think for me, um, something that I have to do is like remind myself because it's easy. You get on Instagram. Okay. Does this person have more followers? Okay. If they do, what are they doing? Okay. Is their brand yeah. better? Like, okay. How can I like make my brand better? You know, you yeah. go into all of these things that uh, really do live in this world of comparison. And when I see those things, I say, okay, God, help me be inspired by these people, but not conform to these That's people. Good. Yeah. Like, I want to be inspired by them. I want to see things that they're able to do and take that in for myself and then let you transcribe on my heart what you want to push out. Or so like, good. When it, you know, when it comes to fashion, when it comes to style, like any, any of those things. I remember a lot of this was well before uh, I was doing music. And so I have to go back and say to myself, okay, God, where are those core elements that were a part of me before anything ever came in and touched that? Mm -hmm. Like, where are those intimate places that you just wired me to be who I am and help me live in that versus live in it for someone else? Like, I actually, way more than people probably would ever realize. Okay, this is the perfect example. Yesterday, I'm going over, we're in tour rehearsals, and I went over the entire set list, like all the tracks, all the music, everything, before we went into rehearsal. And then when I was just listening by myself, I was running around the house. I was dancing. Like <laughs> I, I was making up moves and steps and choreography and all this stuff and just like living my best life, right? Like so free, so enjoying it, laugh, like laughing and dancing while going over this music, just loving it. I love and then that. as I'm driving to rehearsal, I told myself, I was like, Lauren, you cannot go into that rehearsal room and not be free and express yeah. yourself while you're in rehearsal. Don't go in there and just be still and like sing songs down <laughs> yeah. and get it over to. And it's so funny. Like, why am I able to feel like, oh, I can fully express myself when no one's watching. But the second that somebody starts watching, watching, I like shrivel yep. up inside and it's, and the Lord told me it is because you're afraid, like the fear of man and yeah. that like you're, you're afraid of like what they're going to think of you. You're afraid of, which is so, I know it probably sounds crazy because I, I do live original. Like I am really my, I am myself in so many yeah. ways, but then there's these other ways that I find myself having yeah. trouble doing that. Um, yeah. And so in the process, I just have to remind myself like, Dance before the Lord if you're going to dance. Like, that's good. Dance in a way that's going to make things like He can actually give you confidence in areas that you didn't necessarily know you needed confidence in. And that's great. Um, also, when you partner with Him on God, why did you make me? Like, what is my purpose on this earth? Yeah. When you get closer to your purpose, you get closer to just actually living original. You get closer mm -hmm. to living free. You get closer to being exactly who it is that he created you to be. Mm -hmm. And I say that with like so much joy and with no pressure. Like there is something about finding your purpose that allows you to uh, not necessarily look at people to validate you, but you you start to say, God, yeah. am, I, am I doing what you've called? Is this the way that you want me to walk? Like I want to, and your steps get lighter and you just That's start so to, good. yeah, you just start to be free in a different way. It's so good. That's so true. I can totally relate to that. And I love that you said like, even you do still struggle in some ways with like fear of man. And I think that that's something that God's been showing me that like, I have to constantly weed out fear of man, you know, because there is always yeah. like something in some place at some time for some reason that I look at it and I'm like, okay, ultimately I just am fearing man in this situation more than I'm fearing God, more than I'm trusting God, more yeah. than ever. I'm leaning on who God made me to be more than my confidence in him. And I've seen that in my life a lot lately. Actually yesterday in front of our team, I was like, hey y'all, like I just want to like confess this in front of my team who works with me. Like I am fearing man right now. Like I am mm -hmm. afraid of, it was a conference situation. And I was like, and uh, this decision was totally made like based out of fear of man and not what I really feel like I 
should have done if I just trust the Lord. And so we like pivoted. We're like, all right, let's let's get that out. Let's actually mm-hmm. like, trust God with this and not make a decision based out of fear. And so I love that you said that because sometimes, you know, it can be easy to be like, oh, I arrived. I am confident or I am doing good in this area. Yeah. But it's also good to be honest with yourself and be like, but there's always there's always more, you know, like God has made us so intricate and so detailed and there's so many incredible things in us and there's always something more to discover and always something more to discover in him through his design. So I love that you said that. And I was thinking about the Instagram thing, how you said it's so tempting to get on Instagram and look at other people and think, well, you know, what are they doing? Why is it working? And I was thinking about the algorithm because you know how, if you look at something, it begins to show you the same type of things. It's like all of a sudden that's all you see. So on my Instagram, literally, like if you go on my Explorer page, it is just like all the same thing. And it's all like positive quotes and it's like pink and (laughs) yellow and like inspiring quotes and people who are talking about scripture, which is so great and so sweet. But sometimes, honestly, I can be like, this is a little bit boring that everything is the same, right? Because I'm looking at the same thing, but it's because all of the same all of these people are trying to do the same thing. And I think about that with Instagram, I'm like this is boring to look at because it's all the same. And like, it's so much better whenever we're all bringing our own self, our own creativity, what God's put in us and our uniqueness. And that's what makes the world exciting. That's what makes us learn from others, seek wisdom and other things and not just have to all look the same and be the same. And so sometimes I get frustrated with that on Instagram and it's a good reminder of like, don't be that in life. Like don't just be a copy of who I see, but actually, like yeah look at myself and look at the lord and say like who do you have me to be so love that you said that um on that note too just of looking at other people and wondering if you should do something different to grow you said you took five years off and five years off is a long time when it comes to the industry's way of doing things um (laughs) i think that something i learned a while back is that going fast you know can actually be a setback it could actually make you go slower Mm -hmm. and one day me and christian were driving to the airport and we were running late and so he was going so fast and because he was going so fast he missed the exit and we had to go do a you turn and it it was such a good analogy of going fast can actually be a setback because you think you have to get there you have to go so fast you have to go so fast and then in doing that you make mistakes along the way and so mm-hmm. what has taking five years to put something out taught you and to people who get in that mindset of I have to get it done because so and so is putting pressure because I'm in this how do you fight against the rush that life throws at you and take time with something So the hubs like to try to stay as healthy as we can so that we can continue to be active with our family, with our lifestyle, and all the things. And so if you ever heard us talk about this, we love AG1. It is so helpful with over 75 vitamins, minerals, and probiotics. It's such an easy way to stay healthy. Being healthy can sometimes be hard when you're busy, but AG1 makes it so easy for any family to achieve. Uh, Christian likes to take his in the morning. Just one scoop of AG1 into a cold glass of water will just boost your energy energy and focus and it's so great. Uh, Christian's out there telling so many people that he loves AG1 and likes a taste of it too, that he's gotten a lot of people hooked on AG1, like his dad started using it and traveling with it and it's just really great. It didn't take long at all before we noticed uh, better sleep with AG1. It also supports your immune system and gut health, which if you um, have good gut health, that contributes to your good mental health, which is a blessing to everyone. So AG1 can also help your hair look healthier, your skin and nails be healthy. So who doesn't want that? Hair, skin, nails, gut health. I mean, this is a win for everyone involved. This is the healthiest thing that you can do in under a minute. And it's so easy that you can... um, do it when you're traveling. Like I mentioned, these are the travel packs right here. You can just toss them in your bag. It's kind of hard to stay healthy on the road sometimes, so this makes it extremely easy. Uh, I have some friends who are touring and they're musicians and artists, and I know that they travel with theirs and it makes it super simple. Another thing I enjoy from uh, Athletic Greens is their vitamin D3 plus K2 drops. All I do is just put a few drops in a drink or just on food, and vitamin D helps support your heart, your teeth, your bones. I've always noticed a big difference whenever I start taking 
vitamin D and just how I feel overall. Um, plus, in this little container thing, there's over 600 servings in each bottle. So I know I'll be good for the long haul. I won't ha be having to go buy any more anytime soon. So if you're looking for a simpler, effective investment for your health, try AG1 and get five free AG1 travel packs and a free one-year supply of vitamin D with your first purchase. Just go to drinkag1.com slash woe. Again, that's drinkag1.com slash woe to check it out today. Oh yeah. Okay. So this is going to be like a little deep dive for two seconds and then I love it. I'll come back to the surface. But it's really interesting if you travel abroad and you go to Europe or you go to Mexico or you go to these places, they're not running and their cultures mm. survive. They don't only survive, they thrive. Mm. And we're over here and this is zero shame to any person listening in because I, I get it. I mean, I was with a therapist for years having to figure out medication, all the things, right? So I do get it, but Americans are so medicated with depression medications, with anxiety medications, with all sorts of medications that are meant to like actually just allow us to live. Mm -hmm. And nobody ever says it's because we're moving too fast. Nobody mm -hmm. ever like waves the flag, but every other culture, like Europe, they have um, like hours of the day, like from two to four, that every single business in the entire city will shut down. And wow. then in Mexico, they have, in like Spanish cultures, they have siestas where every single business completely shuts down. Like you can't go grab a sandwich. The other thing that's really interesting in Europe, it is very hard to find a trash can on like any public trash. It's so funny. Like it's actually so really hard. And the reason for it is they're not eating on the go. Like when they need wow. to eat, they sit down at a meal sit. and they eat. They're not going and grabbing this coffee here to like, oh, I got to stay stimulated, stimulated and oh my gosh, I have to get this done and this done. They're not in a hustle mentality. Yeah. They work, they take a break, they eat. They work, they take a break, they go home. And so I say this to say, that's like a, a deep dive and I'm not trying to be like somebody to ruffle the apple cart at all. But Americans move very fast. If you just study our culture, like if you just like no politics, no nothing involved, just study the way that we operate hmm. and Americans are moving at like speeds that aren't safe for humanity. And then on top of that, add the pressure of what we just talked about comparison, add the pressure of like, okay, you have to finish college in four years. Okay. Add the pressure of, if you don't finish college, then you're going to, you know, this is going to happen or this is going to happen. Add the pressure of if I'm not at this salary by this season of life, if I don't own a house by this time, like then I'm, I'm not keeping up with society. I'm, I'm like falling behind in quotes. Um, it's really a lot of pressure. Like it's a right. lot, a lot of pressure that other cultures don't have to navigate or navigate in a very different way. Do you yeah. know, um, do you know the Smiths by chance? Do you know, uh, like Ellie Limebear? No, I don't. No. Okay. I didn't know. So Ellie is precious. I feel like Martin Smith. Do you know Martin Smith? By that chance? sounds super He was familiar. in a band called Delirious. Okay. Okay. I know so, of him. Okay. He sings, uh, uh, God reigns. Our yes. God reigns forever, your kingdom reigns. Okay. So he wrote that song, Incredible, like Kingdom People, right? Ellie is his daughter. She's an artist now. And I was with Ellie in um, outside of London. And <clears throat> I remember we went to grab a coffee and it was like her second coffee of the day. And I was like, girl, I can't, I can't have two coffees in one day. Like, it'll just wreck me. <laughs> like my body <laughs> and she... I, it like made me ask the question, like, do you drink coffee because you need, you need it like to be energized or do you drink coffee because you just like in, are enjoying it? And she was like, yeah. oh, no, oh, definitely just to enjoy it. I don't need it. And I said, really? And she said, no, I just like love to sit and socialize and enjoy a cup of coffee with people. And I said, okay, now I'm going to go a little deeper. And she said, yeah. I said, 
do you wake up tired? And she, her mind was blown. She was like, what? Like, what do you mean? Wake up tired? No, I, I wake up refreshed. Like that's what sleep does. And I, I going back to your question. Okay. How do you navigate life out of a place of rest? How do you navigate when you've got all of these pressures? I'm just here to validate any person that is listening on the other side of this, that feels like there's no way I can catch up to society. Mm-hmm. I'm already behind and I'm doing every, I'm running as fast as I possibly can. My hair is falling out. I'm tired. I don't have time even for myself anymore, much less friends or family. I'm just trying to pay my bills. Like any person who is in that scenario, that is very, very real. And I just want them to feel like if it is definitely difficult, what I do is because I mean, you know, our careers can move at lightning speed. Mm -hmm. If we want to make something happen, we can figure out a way to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And we can hustle our way, get there and do this, 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 and this. But operating out of place of rest is so much more fruitful. It doesn't mean that you're not going to have the pressure that says, why are you taking that break? Don't you know we have an album coming out? (laughs) Why are we, why are you... I know that you worked seven days straight, eight days straight, but why are you taking five days off? Like we don't have time for that. Mm -hmm. But the cost of not working out of a place of rest is so much more damaging than taking that time off because God is superior and Mm -hmm. he can expedite time. He can make time work on your side. Time isn't a factor to him. It's a factor to the world. And if he can make the whole world in seven days, then he can obviously make our careers and our lives organize and work when we are operating in a place of rest. And so, so good. this verse that I cling to, I know I went like way around the, That's the so world good, here, Lord. literally pun intended, way around the world. But the <laughs> verse that I cling to is uh, this verse I found in Psalms, and it says that even while you rest, he will provide. Yes. Even while you sleep, the word used there is sleep. Even while you sleep, I will provide. So there's moments where I'm like, I can't even sleep because my mind is racing so much because I have so many things to do. Yeah. Um, and I have to remind my spirit, remind myself like, Lauren, you're not going to bow to the kingdom of this world. You will bow to the kingdom of the Lord. And that looks like operating in a place of rest. So as yeah. you go to sleep, Say, God, take over my mind, take over my body, bring me to like a heavenly rest that only you can provide for me. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and then when making business decisions, I try to do the same and say, I know that right now should be the time that I'm supposed to hustle, but I really feel like I need to be still, like I need yeah. to be before the Lord. I need to be uh, purposeful. And so that it's different in every person's life. i Obviously, I own my own business. I can make those type of decisions. But for people who don't own their own business, that they are caught up in a time that somebody else creates for them, like, hey, you'll be here from nine to five or, hey, you'll be. It's figuring out different ways. How do I refresh my spirit? Mm -hmm. How do I allow myself to literally say, God, come into this moment with me. Come into my Mm -hmm. workspace with me. Come into my morning routine with me. Mm -hmm. Come into my Mm -hmm. evening routine with me. I feel like the morning and evening routines are really, really important um, to gain that like spiritual rest, you know? So good. Gosh, I love that. I'm so glad you took us around the world because that is so helpful. It's so helpful to me, honestly, sitting here listening to that. And I can just 100% echo everything you said from personal experience. Like when you said the cost of not slowing down is so great. Like it, yeah. it's actually more damaging, right? Than to just take the days off or to do the thing that might feel hard in the moment. And I think that back to the whole fear of man, fear of the Lord thing, it's a good question to ask yourself. Like, am I not slowing down because does any of this have to do with the fear of man? You know, can I actually mm-hmm. slow down, but I'm not because I think I have to hustle because dot, dot, dot. And I think that even if you do have a nine to five, like there are certain things that you can do, like Lauren said, that you can shift in one way or another to give yourself some of that rest back. Like for me at the beginning of this year, I looked at my year up until I was going to have Haven and I was like, whoa, this is crazy. And I was feeling a little yeah. overwhelmed. And I was like, what can I get rid of? Because there's a lot that I can't, a lot I'm committed to, I'm doing it. 
I'm, I'm even excited about it. You know, um, I have to work hard, but what can I do to help just mentally and, you know, me stay strong? And I was like, I can delete social media. And so I deleted social media. And honestly, I was also, though, I was like, oh, no, it's such a bad time to delete social media. You know, you start thinking, you're like, because then how am I going to promote that? And how am I going to share this? And then that, what if, you know, you lose these followers? And it's like all these thoughts immediately pop into your head of why you shouldn't because you're thinking hustle, hustle, hustle. And I was like, no, like I have to. And so I deleted Mm -hmm. it and I ended up not getting it back until this month. So it was like eight months off of social media. And it was like the best thing for my year. I mean, my mental space that was just so free and it just was so nice to spend like even the summer with Haven and Honey and not be distracted by my phone, even though I was like, I was videoing them, but not for the sake of sharing, just for me to have and like all the pictures that I took and all the things, it was just sweet and it was pure and there was no pressure to it. And I was just like, I'm so glad that I did that for myself. And so I do think, you know, even if you can't get rid of everything on your schedule, there are certain things that you can reposition that help you just slow down. Y'all, I love changing up my wardrobe. I love trying different funky styles. Today, I'm literally wearing a jean vest with some jeans, some denim on denim. I like just trying something different, trying something fun. And whatever your wardrobe looks like this season, Cinch Fix is an awesome way to discover new styles and brands that you might love. All you have to do is answer a few questions about your favorite stores, styles, and how much you want to spend. Then your Cinch Fix stylist will collaborate with you on the looks that you'll love. And I got to be honest, this is a pretty great deal, right? I mean, you get a personal style with all this. So with a wide range of sizes and over a thousand brands and styles, Stitch Fix Stylist will find your perfect fit. So whether I'm going out on a date with Christian, hanging out at home watching a movie, literally whatever I'm doing, Stitch Fix has you covered for all the things. Actually, um, this past fall, I got two really cute jackets from Stitch Fix. I got like a leather jacket and then a puffer jacket. Obviously, I'm not wearing a jacket right now, but I'm ready for the cold weather to come back so I can wear those jackets because they're so cute. There's also no subscription required, so I can order a box when I need a quick refresh or something fun, or I can set it and forget it with regular fixes, which is also nice too. Stitch Fix lets um, you try on everything as well at home before you buy it, so you can just keep what you love and send back what you don't. It's so simple and yet so awesome and easy, y'all. So try Stitch Fix today at stitchfix.com slash woe, and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix, so that's stitchfix.com slash Woe for 25% off today. Stitchfix.com slash woe. I love that you said that he's working while we're resting because I really experienced that this summer. I was on maternity leave all summer and it was, I didn't do that with honey and talk about counting the cost. I did not do that with honey and I just like kept going. I mean, literally had honey, finished my book, did a conference, like just, it was nuts. And by the time November hit of that year, I had her in May. I was at such a state of burnout that I didn't even know I I would or could experience that I was like, I don't think I can do anything anymore. I almost quit everything. So that was a big call. So this year I was like, okay, we are doing maternity leave. I am taking the months off. I'm staying home with my family, healing, resting up, bonding, all that. And it was so good. But one thing that was really cool was I'm in the process of writing this new book and my co-writer came to hang out with me right before I had Haven. And I like told her this whole message on move that I'm wanting to do and all this stuff. And I was like, go write on this topic and like told her a million stories and a million ideas to write about so that we could start our collaboration. So then we didn't talk for two months. And a week before we talked, I started kind of feeling God shifting the message that God had put on my heart um, from moving to actually working through being stuck. And I was like, oh, this is so good, but this changes everything. So whenever we had our first call back, I was like, I'm so excited to tell her about this. I wonder like where she took this message and everything I said. And we get on the phone and she goes, okay, Sadie, I just have to tell you, like, I changed it a little bit. And I was like, okay, yeah, like, let me, let me hear. And she was like, I was like, I actually did too. I can't wait to tell you about what I, what I was feeling. And she goes, yeah, it was so weird. It was just this week. I couldn't sleep. I kept thinking, move, move, move. And then she said the literally same sentence I had just told Steph that morning. She said, how are we supposed to tell people to move when they feel stuck? And I was like, are you serious? And she was like, yeah. Like, so I started it with talking about being stuck. And I said, I just 
changed the same thing in this message this week because the Lord told me that same sentence. And so she's over there in Colorado or Oklahoma, sorry, Oklahoma. I'm here in Louisiana. We didn't talk all summer because I was like, I know I'm supposed to rest. But the Lord put this sentence on my heart that changed the message. He put the same one on her heart in the same week, which changed the message. So when we started working again, we were already aligned in messaging. And I just thought about that verse that you just said, that even like while we're resting, that he's watching over, that he's working, that he's doing things. And so you really do, ha- can, like you really can take the pressure off yourself when it comes to kingdom yeah. things, especially because it's like God's in that, like he's building kingdom on earth with you. And so that was just like the coolest thing to me to experience. And I was recently talking to someone who told me that they they were like, I can't take a maternity leave and they do more social media. They were like, because this and this and this. And I said, friend, I'm just going to encourage you. Like, you have to. Like, it is so worth it for so many reasons. And so I love that you shared that. Um, I know there's so many things to talk about with you and we do not have any time. And I wish we, we're going to have to have a whole other podcast, just like a whole other album. But a couple more Let's things. Do it. Um, Kaleidoscope Jesus. I love it. I love yes. the song. I love the meaning. I love everything about it. And I know you're on tour, the Kaleidoscope Tour. Can you tell me a little bit about just that messaging and that song in particular? Because um, it is a vibe. Oh, come on. Okay. Back in the day, I've never actually, I don't know if I've ever seen a full episode, but the, which is terrible. But I do remember this, that 70s show, that the TV show, it's called That 70s mm-hmm. Show. Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis, all of them, I remember in between each scene, they would do these like slow-mo things where they would jump in slow-mo and then it would switch to the next scene. And then they'd like do peace signs in slow-mo and it would go to the next scene. But they were always like jumping. I and that. I just, every time I hear that little flute part in the beginning, I'm like, oh my gosh, this <laughs> just, the whole vibe, the whole feeling feels like that. Uh, and... It all started, the song started, I was just telling um, some of the writers about this experience that I'd had in Louisiana where I saw God in places that I never expected to see him. Um, And it was a lot of with our friends. It was with Steph. It was with some of the other crew that we love hanging out with. And I remember seeing this little girl and she was in um, a grocery store and she kept going out, coming back, going out, coming back. And she was like probably seven years old, like really young. Mm-hmm. And you know, like New Orleans is pretty sketchy. So I was sitting over there thinking, why is this little girl by herself? And it was at nighttime. And so I go outside. I was like, when she came back in and out, like two more times, I looked at our friends and I said, hey, I'm going to go make sure this little girl is okay. Something's not right. And so she comes back in and I just went up to her in the um, the grocery store and I said, hey, sweetie, like, is everything okay? Are are you alone? And she's like, no, no, I'm with people. And she showed me like who she was with. And it was like some people that were, I don't want to say that they were on drugs, but they were probably on drugs. Like they were definitely in some element of an altered state. Right. And they were gypsies like on the go. And I remember thinking, okay, I don't know necessarily how to get this little girl out of this scenario. Um, and, but I did know the one thing that would give just a little bit of peace is like, I might not be able to help her earthly situation, but how can I help her heavenly situation? Mm -hmm. And so I remember asking her, like, we were talking for a second, talking her, the people that she was with, I don't know if they were her mom. I don't know who they were, but, uh, they were like talking to her, stroking her hair, trying to like make her look good in front of me and then trying to make themselves look like they were responsible Mm -hmm. individuals, like put posturing this whole thing. And, um, finally, after we just talked for a second, I just looked at her and I said, Hey, do you know, do you know Jesus? I thought for a second, like maybe she wouldn't know, maybe I'd get to share with her for the first time, like maybe. And, um, she looked up at me and she goes, Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I know who that is. And her face went from wow. this face of like like chaos of like I don't know how like she mm-hmm. knew that her situation was chaos, right? Wow. Um but in the moment, like when I mentioned the name of Jesus, her 
disposition changed. And wow. I was like, okay, if she knows who he is, then that's beautiful. So fast forward, I'm like grabbing a hold of all of these interactions and all these stories that I'm taking on through life. Like, wow, I never thought that Jesus would show up here or show up here or show yeah. up here. And a lot of it does come with just taking the risk, taking the leap of faith, like that night that we had at the drive through you know? Yeah. Like, these moments happen and you're like, wow, I can't believe that Jesus just showed up here. And it's really, it's beautiful to me. And so when I was a little girl, I would play with my aunt's kaleidoscopes all the time. And the thing that's unique about a kaleidoscope is that with every turn, you get a different image every single time. Like you can never remake the same scene that you got prior with a kaleidoscope. Every so time cool. there's something new, there's a new facet, there's a new color, there's a new shape every single time. And so I was with my friend, her name's Natalie Hemby, and she says, girl, you got to write a song called Kaleidoscope Jesus. Like I have this song title, I've been waiting for this song title, and I feel like it's for you. And I said, let's do it. And so we wrote, and it. it's basically all about the unique places that you would see God show up in in ways that you never imagined. Yeah. Um, and the reason why we called it the Kaleidoscope Tour is because every single show you look out from stage, and I know that you know this exact thing, you look out from stage and you see so many faces, each person representing a different story, each person representing a different background, each person representing a different life experience. Um, it's so diverse, the diversity of people that you interact with. And so I feel like when I get on stage, it's like I'm seeing that kaleidoscope turn each night. That's so cool. It's like this beautiful collection of color that God places before my eyes to see. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people like one of the biggest roles of the night is the audience. Like the audience actually shapes where the song goes, where the show goes, how I interact with them. It's really yeah. based on the audience that night. And so I feel like uh, there's a lot of things that can divide us in the world right now. But the thing that I love is that God has created all of us uniquely and individually. And when you look inside of a kaleidoscope, you can see all these different individual pieces. But with each turn, all of those all those individual pieces become this collected beautiful body of artistic expression like you'll never get that so image cool. again you'll never get to see that image again and each night on tour is different because the audience is so different and i love that we all make up something beautiful and so um yeah that's why it's called the class so tour good. and that's the story behind the song I Yay. love it so much. That's so beautiful. And for everyone listening who's a fan of Laura, and I know a lot of you are, let me just say from a personal friend that I'm able to be to Lauren and hang out with her just when no one's watching, no one has taught me more about seeing Jesus in situations that might seem unlikely than you. That night has marked my life. Uh, it has oh. been something I have talked about, I've shared, and it was such a casual night. Me, Lauren, and some friends were hanging out. It was really late, and we were somewhere that I was scared to be at. It was not <laughs> my normal scene, and Lauren is just like thriving and dancing and having fun. I'm like, I'm kind of scared, actually. Like, we might should not be here and my typical anxiousness and Lauren's like <laughs> I, I think I asked you I was like why do you like like being in places like this and you're and you shared like that you see Jesus in these places and you've shared a lot more than that but what you shared with me was so profoundly impactful. And then right after that, you were like, but I know you're hungry and I know you don't feel comfortable, so let's go get you some food. So we go and we go through this drive through and it was hilarious and the story itself is very comical. <laughs> but what was so crazy is we walked straight from this conversation about Lauren telling me that like you can see Jesus in the most unlikely places to seeing Jesus in the most unlikely place in this <laughs> drive through with this amazing man. And it was just so crazy, this drive through man named Jeremiah. And right then, as soon as you said Jeremiah, I'm like, wow, God, really like you're making this obvious that this is about to be a moment that you're all over. And it was so cool. So you've taught me so much when it comes to that. You live your life like you preach it. And you even write about that in, in a song, Don't Believe Them. Um, 
you are someone who really is practicing what you preach. You are someone who really is walking the walk that you talk. And I'm so thankful for that. Lastly, I just want to hit on a little bit just the joy of this album. Um, it is so fun. It is so joyful. It is so colorful. But I do know that you have gone through a really hard time with mental health before writing this album and maybe even in the process of that with anxiety and fear and whatnot. And I think a lot of people look at you and they're like, she's so fearless. She's so joyful. And you are both of those things. <laughs> But that doesn't mean that you don't struggle with the same things everybody else does. And I think sometimes when people see people who wear a lot of color, who smile, who dance, and they're in anxiety or they feel like they're in depression, they're like, that's just not relatable because that's not my personality. That's just not how I'm wired. But I love that that's not true. You know, it's not a personality difference. It's something that you found in Jesus. So can you hit on a little bit why this album is so colorful and joyful and fun even though you've been through a hard time. Okay, before the podcast, before we started, I was like, I need to figure out. I, I was like, I am I going to wear my colorful hat because I this is my that. this is my go. And now that we're talking about color, but when I went to put the headphones on, I was like, okay, I'll ditch the hat. But you know what? I'm just going to wear it just because we're talking about color wear and what God can do. So here's the thing. I do. It's funny how uh, so often people can say. <laughs> so often people can say that, there we go, um, that, you know, oh, you have all this joy, you have so much life, like, wow, you must never struggle with a hard day. And I'm like, oh, that could not be further from the truth. Truth To know joy is to know sorrow. And mm-hmm. to know joy is to know pain. To know joy is to know depression because you know what God has brought you through. Mm-hmm. And so... In the process of making this record, I had never, I had experienced anxiety when I was a kid in certain ways, like how, probably how a normal kid would, like getting on a plane for the first time, I remember being like, oh, I'm kind of freaked out by this, you know? (laughs) Um, I had this season where, like, I was in eighth grade and I was terrified. Somebody had just lost their father um, and they were at a slumber party and I had to go tell them, like, your mom is here, something's happened, you know? And I remember like that year being terrified, like so afraid to leave the house because I was afraid that something would happen to my family. Mm-hmm. And so I had like these, these little moments of anxiety. I was always the girl that would leave the slumber party when I was a little kid, like in the middle of the night because I was homesick. <laughs> I needed to go see my mom, you know, that was always me. So I had like those little elements of it here and there, but nothing that would dictate my life, like nothing that would mm-hmm. control my life, nothing that would own my life. I was always a free spirit. Fast forward to end of 2020, beginning of 2021 through to the beginning like honestly, the middle of 2022, I went through a season, which is the whole process of me writing for this record through the most, the highest amount of depression I've ever felt, the highest amount of fear I've ever felt, the highest amount of anxiety I've ever felt. And I only say this to say, I went through a series of panic attacks, like legitimate, probably should have gone to the hospital panic attacks. And some Mm -hmm. of them happen on airplanes. And like to the point where they were bringing the defibr- defibrillators out just in case I ended up having a heart attack. Like wow. real deal. Like Delta, we were fine on Delta. They brought all this paperwork out to like ground the plane because they weren't sure if I was having a heart attack. Like wow. straight up panic attacks. The real, real deal. And I'm saying this to say for anybody who's on, who's in the process of that right now, like it is real. You do feel like you're crazy. You do wonder what is going on. Like I feel like something else is taking over my body. But these are the things that I really feel like the Lord has brought me through. Um, and I'll touch on a couple of things. One, I got to meet this neurologist who you also know, and he talked about the process of breathing and how you can breathe through scenarios that really reset your body. And so for me, it was this breathing exercise. You breathe in for two seconds, you hold for two seconds, you breathe out for eight seconds, you hold for two seconds, breathe in for two, out, uh, hold for two, out for eight, hold for two. And that process, two, two, eight, two, really resets the body's like wiring. Or you could do the box breathing that's like four seconds of breathing in, four second hold, four seconds out, four second hold. Um, those breathing patterns sound like a wild thought when you're in the moment of like not being able to catch your breath. 
But that for me partnered with, and this is like the absolute key, partnered with telling yourself, the Lord is in control. He is fighting for me. Fear not for I am with you. Like I would be breathing and just quoting that scripture over myself. Fear not for I am with you. God, thank you for being with me. I know that I feel out of control right now, but I thank you that you are in control. This moment isn't passing before your eyes without recognizing. And That came through a lot of practice because there was one time that I remember somebody quoting scripture to me while I was having a panic attack. And I was like, I don't even know what you're talking about. It sounds crazy. I can't believe anything else right now other than what I'm physically going through. And there are, I say that to say, like, there were moments that I even was like, I don't even know. I don't know what is real. Like, I feel such moments of chaos. I actually need someone to speak over me the truth right now. So it's two things. One, or it's three things. One, breathing, but also partnering with scripture in the process of breathing. When God created the world, He it says that he breathed the world in, into existence. He breathed the life. And so if I am feeling like I'm dying, right? Like that's what a panic attack is. You, It's a fight or flight response. If I'm feeling like I'm dying, But I have access to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who created this world with breath. I'm going to say, all right, God, I'm going to breathe. I'm going to breathe through this moment because you can give me life in this moment. But I'm not going to just breathe. I'm going to take on the role of the Spirit and say, God, let your Holy Spirit minister to me in the process of this craziness. Like, here's this scripture. Fear not for I am with you. And I would just say that over and over again. And then I would say, God, make me courageous. Like give me boldness, make me courageous in the midst of my fear. Because courage isn't like just looking at fear and being like, I'm going to figure out the shortcut. Courage is saying, even being afraid, I'm going to continue to move forward, even being afraid. So fear not for I am with you. God, give me the courage to face my fear and walk through my fear, through my fear, not around it, but through it. And so those two things, the other thing would be getting people who can, can speak that scripture into your life, who can speak that encouragement into your life. So you've got the first thing, breathing, quoting scripture to yourself. Second thing, having friends that when you feel out of control, they can come and remind you of who you are, what it looks like. Like that's what thank God I do was written about was because I was like, God, I need you in this moment. And he brought friends to come around me and say, we're going to quote, quote scripture over you. Uh, and then last but not least, the Lord says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And a lot of times we can look at that and be like, Oh, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Like, okay, that's a really cute Bible verse that we learned when we were little kids. But when you have a lack of joy in your life and you can understand Oh, I know what a lack of joy feels like. It feels like a an incredible amount of a lack of strength, a lack of capacity, a lack of um, of stability. Like that's what the lack of joy feels like in my life. It feels like a lack of all these other things as well. And so, I feel like there was a season where I really had to fight for joy. I had to fight beyond feeling sick all the time, beyond feeling like my physical body was just overtaken with depression or with anxiety and fight to say, God, I'm going to renew my mind in you today. That's what I was kind of mentioning earlier about like having to renew my mind to pursue the joy of the Lord. And I think sometimes that's like hard and tricky when your body is already overwhelmed, when your mind is already overwhelmed. But what I did was take the simple and let it be magnified in my life. So I would go on a walk and I'd say, oh, I see this person on a street corner. That person has a smile. God, let that smile minister to me. Let it actually mean something. Let it cultivate something beautiful in my life to where I'm able to access your joy. Like let it allow for an access of joy in my life. And I would do that over and over and over and over again. And I think the thing that the enemy tries to do whenever you're feeling depressed or whether you're feeling anxious, whether you're feeling full of fear, is he tries to isolate you. He doesn't want you to interact with humanity. He doesn't want you to interact with the people next to you because then he can keep you in this cycle. And the thing to do to break through fear, to break through anxiety, to break through depression is 
interact with the people around you. Go up to them, strike up a conversation. Even if you're like, this is so awkward. I don't know how to do this. I remember I was having the start of a panic attack on a plane and I waved at the attendant, like keep the door open. I got to get off this plane. And the lady looked at me and she like put her arm up and she's like, why are you getting off this plane? And I literally said to her, I was like, cause I'm, I need to go. I've got a phone call. And she's like, no, you didn't. Why are you getting off this plane? This is a complete stranger. Wow. And she said, listen to me. She said, I said, I'm, I think I'm having a panic attack and I need to go. She said, if you trust me, I promise you, I will get you through to the other side of this flight. I promise you. Wow. I will be here with you. I'll sit in this with you and I'll get you to the other side. She didn't know who I was. It wasn't anything like that. Like this was just a random lady that was like, I'll help you. And I think humanity in our moments of weakness is wow. actually a lot kinder sometimes than what we give it credit for. And so I would say the enemy's plan is to isolate us in those moments of fear. But if you reach out to someone next to you and say, I'm pursuing joy in this, and you might be the conduit right now that God <laughs> uses to help me in this moment. Um, those are the three things, like pursuing joy. So great. Let, let the joy of the Lord actually renew yes. your strength. And it is possible. It's really That's possible. So good. From someone who like their, their therapist was like trying to figure out how to get them on ketamine. And if you know anything about ketamine, like that is real deal. Like I was in it. I was really in it from someone who has like felt that to someone who has not had to go through those processes because I actually was able to sit with the Lord and find joy. Um, that's great. I'm just here to encourage anybody that's going through that process. Like that's, it's real and you're validated in the way you feel with those situations. But he has provided a way out. He has, and he will send people along the way. Just look for the angels in disguise as, as humans. <laughs> look for those so angels good. in disguise. Because that he'll send is so them good. good. Gosh, th- that was so good. I'm so thankful that you shared that, like, truly, because I've been through that. And those tips would have been so helpful. And it's crazy because those are the exact things I'm teaching Honey right now. She's two years old, but she already gets anxious. And her two Bible verses that she knows now are fear not for I'm with you. And the other day she started getting scared in her room and I heard her say, fear not for I am with you. And she said, there's no monsters. And it was so sweet. <laughs> and, then, and, and then she'll go, the joy of the Lord makes me strong. And she does that when she's sad. And so like, I'm already giving her those tools because I'm like, right now, you might not even understand like what they mean. You know, might not know fully like grasp the reality of like, what those words are saying. But even now when she says them, it it shifts her mind, right? It's like, I'm not, yeah. I'm not going to fear. Like there's no monsters. Like Jesus is with me. I'm, God's joy makes me strong. Like those words are already doing something in her, but later in life she'll yeah. have those tools and that truth. So I love that you shared that. That's so good. Lauren, your life, um, your life just speaks Jesus. Your life is um, a deposit of joy to the world. And I'm thankful for that. Yeah. I'm thankful for you and your color and and this album. I cannot wait to hear all 23 songs. Thank you for writing them and just everything you said on this podcast is incredibly helpful. So I love you, friend. Thank you so much. I love you, Sadie. This has been so special. I'll come anytime. Thanks for having me. Thanks to everybody listening. Sadie, you're a treasure. Just the way that you even uh, was so, were so encouraging and speaking kind words over me. I tell you, I, I love it. We need to hang out more often. <laughs> we do. We do. Every, we say you, this every time up. we do. I miss you. Come, I know. Come to Monroe. I'm coming. I am coming. I got to go pay Steph a visit too. So that works out great. It actually works out great. Well, I love you so much.